Welcome back. So in this one, we are working on Blue Baru. We're going to be working on spark plugs today and some other odds and ends that uh, we've been wanting to do. I want to do a serpentine belt if we can get to it, but main thing today is spark plugs. And we also have these headlights that Naomi's going to be installing. So what are these here? So I bought the Farron Forner. I don't know if it's Forner, Forner, whatever. LED lighting from... Amazon, actually. Yep. These are H11 bulbs. I'm going to put these in the low beams. Yeah, get some and, nice LEDs uh, going on yeah, here. Yeah, I still have halogen bulbs in this car. And only my fog lights are LED, so it's time to upgrade the low beams. And it'll match nice, because this is already LED, so this looks nice. But this is just kind of out of yellow. place, yellow in the middle. But yeah. And then you got the nice white fog. Or, so I think it'll all tie in a lot better. It's still, she's going to have the amber daytimes here, the running lights, but... You know, those are for a later date, but anyway. Took a couple before pictures and a video, so we'll see what it looks like at nighttime. Definitely. Just during the day. Yep. So something else I thought we could do is, uh, while the plugs are out, uh, I'm sorry, while, while this stuff is out to do the plugs, because apparently to do the plugs on these, I mean, like, they say you could lift the motor, yada, yada, but I, I've heard it's doable by just taking the battery out and taking the airbox out. So I think we're just going to take the airbox and the battery out, which should leave really good access to the headlights so she can do her thing. So we'll start doing that first, and at some point we'll put these lights in, and it should be nice and easy. And I was thinking about maybe doing a throttle body clean while we're here, because we've never done that on this, and we'll have half the intake piping already off. So, you know, just whatever we can do to clean stuff up, yeah, we're gonna do. So that and uh, whatever else it needs. So let's yeah. tear into this thing. Almost at 85K, so yep. it's a little overdue. For sure, you're ready. It's supposed to be at 60, so we waited. <laughs> Oops, it's got a little rough idle. I'm hoping it cleans that up. We'll have to take a look at the plugs, what they look like. The oil's a little bit down this time, and it's only gone a thousand miles in the oil change, so either we didn't fill it up enough, or uh, maybe it's starting to burn a little bit, so we're just gonna have to keep an eye on that and we'll see what the plugs look like. I put the recommended amount in there like I always do, five quarts. So I'm pretty sure it takes five quarts. I think it's five point something. Five point something, well, I only put five, so we'll see. <laughs> That's what, it's fine, it was in the operating range still, just a little bit down, so we just gotta keep an eye on things, you know? This thing is a tank, I'm not worried. These are fins. What's spinning? The whole... Is it in the battery tray? Is it coming out though? I don't know. I think it's coming out. Yeah. It's like a threaded rod with a nut on the end. Huh? Keep, yeah, keep going until it's out. You got it. Yep. And hit the other side. drive extensions are they're good and bad you don't really need one right now but when you got like an awkward angle and you're trying to go at it from the side and it's not straight on the wobble allows you to have like a little bit of a off-center approach you know what I'm saying yeah <laughs> very nice so got the battery out getting the battery tray out we got a little extra wiring here because of the sound system then yours will have but I'll grab those bolts for you go ahead Maybe we got an additional bolt then? Yeah, somewhere. Something on the, on the side. side. Yeah, on the back side. There's two. Oh, you see two? Yeah. Okay, we'll see if we can get those. Maybe a wrench will be good for that. Tell us, tell us what's going on right here. We got a couple of difficult bolts here. You're not going to be able to see them, but for the battery box, they're all the way on the side here. It's kind of sandwiched between the engine. So, I think your best bet best tool for this is a flex head 14. Got the last bolt. Battery tray is coming out. There's also another one right here on the frame rail. Another oh, 14. Yeah, there's some, some sand in there. But yeah, so we got it out. Looks like we got really good access now to the spark plugs. Let me show you. With a flashlight here. Let's see. See the coils right there, so nice. We're looking good. And 
done in taking the battery out and the tray. Now we have better access to the low beam headlight right here. So I'm gonna work on that while he's working on the spark plug situation. Let me add it. Oh, you know what? <laughs> we did the wrong one. Oh, it's over here. Is that my bad? That's my bad. Yeah. I came over and undid the wrong one. Yeah. That's me. That's me right there. <laughs> That's too funny. Look at us. Look at me, really. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways. No, you're good. Yeah, let's just put this back. Then, but it's halogen. Yeah, you, yours are halogen right here. Those are your DRLs right there. Oh. We gotta upgrade those next. In my ah, opinion, those see, need it DRLs, too. DRLs, that's my. Okay, here you go. Now you're on track. Dang, that looked nasty there you go. too. Bam. That's not too bad. Yeah, it looks a little bit smoky. You know, I think you're gonna get some better brightness. Well, look yeah. How open it this time. Here you go. Right. Mm. Open this. Look at that. <laughs> what did you take out? You took something out? The whole air box. Look, but look how big it is. I was trying to show you. It goes all the way down to the bumper. This whole baffle. I don't know what this thing does. Yeah, there's. A it big... just helps to quiet everything down. Yeah. So you don't have now. intake noise. <laughs> I say we get rid of it. There we go. Pretty good. That was a pretty easy fit. So I'm happy with that. You can see it's in there now. This is it right here. And yeah, check out the battery tray to do that and the battery. Probably only had to take the battery out to do that. But so we got. <laughs> I like that look back at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to get this out of our way here for the sake of cleanliness. Move this over. And we'll, uh... Taking my hole. Take the whole intake box off. Don't lose this. I mean, we can do the ratchet. Oh, it's okay. We can't forget that, and that's right down there. Thanks. We lost our nice ratcheting 14 millimeter stubby wrench in the shield somewhere. We've got to get that out. But we took off. We didn't. You don't have to take this off through the plugs. But I want to clean the throttle body. And look how look at. We keep freeing up space in here. Look how open it is. I see how pulling the engines out of these are easy. I mean, we're already we're already halfway there. Let's just take it out. Mm, I gotta go home tonight, so right. I don't think we can do that. All right, next time. But this time, let's get to work on these spark plugs over here. See what we can do. So we got a couple of 10 millimeters holding the coils in. We'll just do uh, let's do one at a time. Let's shoot for the front one. And while that one's out, um, I'll show you guys what we're up against. So let's see. Yeah, that's in my hand. That's good, you toss it. Toss it somewhere. So we got the coil bolt. Get over here. See how hard it is to pull these coils off. Nice. Yeah, this is not focusing. That was good, better. So we'll just set the coil aside. I might want to look inside of here and see how everything looks. I don't I don't see any corrosion or anything like that, so I'm happy about that. Oops. Butted heads, butted heads together. So let's see what we got for spark plug socket here. Okay, so we took the spark plug and backed it out. I'm gonna try to get a magnet to get it out of there because I don't have the right spark plug socket, but I do have a 14 deep. And you know what? We can make it work, okay? Not everything is about having the right tools. You gotta make things work sometimes. So here's the wrong tool for the job, but it works. <laughs> Alrighty. And while he was finding the right wrong tool, I was putting in this other low beam. So that is also installed and we got both of our LEDs in. This is how we're gonna get them out. Ah, there it goes. And there's your plug. It looks pretty good actually. I don't see much oil burning or anything. It looks really clean. You got a little something on the tip there. That's interesting looking. Never seen that. 
before. Maybe that's the laser iridiums. Let's see if the rest of them look like that too. Wow. So that's the new one? Yep. Here's a new one. We got the uh, iridium. These are not... The lady, she didn't give me the top of the line ones that I wanted. And then I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm going to change them again in 30,000 anyway. So, it doesn't matter what you get. The, the better ones you get, pretty much the longer they last. You're not really going to experience any performance stuff from spark plugs. Uh, if the vehicle's designed to run with iridiums, I would probably put iridiums back in it, like this thing. I wouldn't put platinums in it. Um, but whatever. Do your thing. If you're going to run platinums, just change them frequently because that's just, they're not designed to run as long. And these are, they say platinums are eight times stronger than iridium. So they should last a lot longer. So I'm going to tighten these by hand just so to make sure I'm getting the proper torque. You can use a torque wrench if you're really interested in that sort of thing, but this really is not a hard job. I thought it was going to be way more difficult. They want you to do like a quarter of a turn. I'm feeling like that ended up being about a quarter of a turn. So that was nice. So now we're going to take this one out and do the backside. And that might be a little bit tighter. I may have to go by hand or use different combinations of extensions and wobble drive stuff. But I'll let you guys know what I use. But for the front one, just this little, uh, I think it's a two inch extension with a deep 14 and a ratchet. And I was able to get it done, even with no spark plug socket. Talk to us. <laughs> just taking out the 10 mil for the coil in the back. I don't know on Subarus what cylinder is number one and what's number two. We could probably try to find out. Look at that. I was able to do that without unplugging it. Looking in there, I don't see any corrosion in that one either. So, pretty happy with the way the coils look so far. So, are you saying we didn't need to do this at all? No, 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 no. The spark plugs themselves are used up, I would say. You know, they're, they've, they're rated for 60,000 miles, apparently, and you got 85 on them, so they're due by mileage. I say change them. It, you can't hurt. <laughs> you can never hurt changing your spark plugs. <laughs> what did you end up using for a tool on the second spark plug? Same thing, guys, really. Same little two-inch extension, no wobble drive or nothing. The ratchet's really tight to here. You could probably space it out with a little something, or depending on variance in your sizes here, you may have to go with a two and a half or something, but it's it's really not a big deal. So I think we're out here. Um, I'm just gonna have to use my little magnet here to uh, fish the plug out of here. Or maybe we're not out yet. I was a little premature, guys. These are. These are kind of a long spark plug, so they take a while. Okay, now I think we're out. Look at this trick. Bam. Just pull it out on an angle, came right out. So it looks pretty good, guys. Honestly, these plugs, they look decent. I don't see maybe a little bit of oil burning in this back cylinder, but uh, they're not too bad. You just added a wobble drive? Yeah, I added a little wobble. Because now it's spaced out a little better and I can get a better get a better handle on the ratchet. So we'll just give this guy a quarter turn that they want after you kind of bottom out. like, And we didn't even really get there before. I feel like it's kind of tight. So, you know, it's a spark plug, guys. It's not a lug nut. That being said, I, I have seen spark plugs loose before. So, you know, tight is tight. There's a little crush washer on it. You guys can see on here, there's a little washer. Put it in the light. This washer has to get crushed. So obviously you can reuse spark plugs. It crushes again. It's like a crush collar on a drain plug. It's gonna crush a little bit and make a seal. So as long as you crush this washer, put enough force to crush the washer, it's gonna seal. So just give it a little crank and that's that. That's enough. You made that look so easy, Jordan. It's really not a hard job, guys. 
The, uh, the hardest gonna... part is taking that battery tray out. Not gonna lie. We'll see how the other side goes, but so far so good. Seems like a real easy do it at home job. I don't know what they charge at Subaru for labor for this. I'm interested to see what they charge to do this job because it's really pretty easy. Feels like I'm not in the threads on this guy here. I'm gonna cross thread the coil bolt. Okay, now it's gone. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this side looks like it might be a little bit more challenging just because we have the AC line in the way. But, uh, you know, worst case, uh, that line is a solid, it's a hard line from there to there. That looks like fun to install. I honestly, I can't even imagine how fun that is. It's just a hard line. You just gotta finagle that thing in there. There's no flex in there. Thanks Subaru, that seems difficult. Anyway, I was gonna say we can move it out of the way, but I don't think we can do that. So we got the 10 out for the coil. Pulling the coil off. This one's in there better than the other side. corrosion or anything on there. That oh, looks pretty good. So we'll let him hang. Just hanging down pretty far in there. Okay. Next side. Apologize for the camera work. I'm not the uh, pro that this one is. <sighs> Hopefully you can see what's going on. A lot of this seems to be manual. This one's kind of squeaky. Can't fit, fit many tools in here. Well, I don't like how that's so squeaky. Oh, back Is to that you a know, sign or something? Yeah, I don't know. It's like a little corrosion in there or something. I'm not the only one here in it. Could spray a little WD-40 down there, but... Fourth and final spark plug. That was a little bit of a challenge to get. This is probably going to be the hardest one here with this uh. AC line in your way to get the coil out. I unclipped the AC line right here, just popped it out, and then unclipped this one, and it basically gave me enough slack to pull. Move your you know, hand you, so we can see. You could do one more even. Pull this AC line up, and just, just tuck him out of the way to get your coil. It's aluminum, so you got a little, little flex to it, and it'll move. But uh, try not to bend it too much, because you can bend it. Yeah. Not the end of the world, you, you just want to. Let's see, this is where we're working with this space that's, everything gets out of focus here. Uh, this tiny space right here. It's probably like, I have small hands so I was able to get that loose, but he had a little bit of a challenge. Get the coil out, yeah. yeah, getting the coil out. Pliers, so. needle nose pliers would help. Yeah. So I got an extension here. Let's see if this makes it in there. So that's kind of not ideal. I had, there we go. Once you get it loose, it's, it's kind of binding a little bit. Let's see if I can get the wobble drive back on there. I know I can do it without it, but I'm trying to make it as nice as possible here. You're getting it. 
already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good old boxer engines. Everybody says it's a pain, but it seems easy to me. I don't know. Yeah, it's not as easy as a four-cylinder, but it's not like a, a V6 you gotta pull the whole intake plenum off. So, in, in reality, spark plugs on a Subaru, I don't think it's that bad, you know? So, we're just gonna do, finish this plug off here. Naomi's got this one going on. So once she finishes backing that out. I think it's loose. Oh, it's definitely loose. You think you do it with your fingers now? Yeah, so we'll we'll try to get this last one out and last one in. We'll put a little anti-seize on the last one because it was squeaky. And uh, we'll clean the throttle body. And that's pretty much it. Oh. This is just like the painstaking process of tightening these battery tray bolts that are like in between the engine here. There's not really much you can get in here. I ratchet, but it's hard to swing it. So anything I can do by hand, I am. So I'm just trying to... Just feeling. Just a little. You know. Little by little. Get it tightened down. I'll finish it with the ratchet. Or with the wrench, I mean ratcheting wrench. You having fun? Oh yeah. So while this battery was out, ah! Jesus. Okay. While the battery was out, put it on charge over here. So something to do. Oh, what just happened? I dropped it. I could hear that. I got it. Oh. And what are you trying to do? I'm trying to break. What happens when you got worn out extensions? Stuff falls off. Okay. So we got it all back together. Naomi, she went to go inside and warm up a little bit. We went out to go get the belt. So I got the new belt. I put it on. You know, it's pretty simple. This is a, uh, there we go. That's a 15 for the tensioner. You just got to crank it to the right and it'll ratchet this guy right in. Give you some slack there to pull the belt off the alternator and then just Put it back the way it was. If you need to take a picture, look up the belt routing diagram online. I just, just visualized how each pulley looked with the belt around it and just say, okay, this one has it wrapped around this way. This pulley has it wrapped around this way. This pulley's wrapped around like this. And if you try to like, I don't know, some people have that uh, photographic memory, some people don't. But my battery's about to die in the camera, so I'm going to fix that and then I'm pulling this thing out. I'll show you guys these lights and I will show you uh, how it runs. Hopefully it runs good, no belt chirp. We did a lot of stuff to this thing. All that, all that good maintenance stuff that it needs. See how quiet. She's purring, guys. Sounds really good. I feel like I feel like I smelled a little bit of oil. She might be puffing on a cold start, guys. Just a little bit. Who knows? Saw a little bit of smoke, but you know she may have a little little valve seal thing going on. But uh, otherwise, you know it's not too far down on oil, so we'll keep an eye on it. But. I don't think it's the rings. I think they fixed the ring issue on this model. Um, it's not, uh, not going to be a big deal. But it runs really good. Sounds good with the belt. And these lights look really good too. I'm going to shut the hood so we can look at the lights. Yeah, guys. It looks sweet. It really suits this car, I think. We just got to get the white DRLs now. I'm probably going to get her some of those because they're going to match nice. But it looks really good. I'm excited. I think she would be too. It's a really good looking car. So anyway, we've got to touch up a couple spots in the, on the grill. I was thinking about getting a different grill for it maybe. Give it a nice look. But yeah, this thing's sweet. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video and uh, enjoyed this process. And we'll show you an update on these lights in the future. But so far so good. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.